This is CTV's W5. Here is Sandy Ronaldo. Welcome to W5. In the world of science, medical discoveries usually undergo years of testing. But for those suffering from debilitating diseases, waiting for science to prove a promising treatment can be frustrating. So, when a doctor in Italy, Paolo Zamboni, suggested multiple sclerosis was linked to constricted veins and that a simple treatment to open them up could stop the disease, MS patients the world over began seeking the procedure. But others in the medical community are demanding strict proof. The liberation treatment was the story that W5 first reported to the world last November. But now, the liberation war is pitting desperate MS patients against doctors and is dividing the medical community. Here is Avis Fabro. I said to the doctor that was doing the procedure, have you done something to me? And he said, yes, we have. He said, why? And I told him that I could move my foot, my hand. This is something Steve Garvey says he hasn't been able to do in a long time, stand on his own two feet. How long has it been since you've stood like this? Uh, probably six, eight years. How does it feel? Feels good. Steve had run out of treatments for his worsening multiple sclerosis. He relied on a walker to cope with the fatigue, the numbness in his left hand and leg. But he says a treatment done here in Canada has given him newfound abilities. Show me a deep knee bend. <sighs> and if I, I tried this before, I would have fallen back or fallen over, definitely. Like countless MS patients, Steve has been online gathering information about a novel and controversial theory about their disease. Developed by Italian doctor Paolo Zamboni. The, the narrowing is that idea, first broadcast on W5 last November, that many of those with multiple sclerosis have blocked veins in their necks and chests. Look at, at this section, the narrowing is a significant stenosis. Their blood doesn't drain properly, sending it back to their brain, a problem that could be contributing to their MS. What's more, Dr. Zamboni's study suggested opening these veins with balloon angioplasty improved symptoms and reduced new MS attacks. It was dubbed the liberation treatment. Uh, wow. No more narrowing. The blood go faster than before. With few options, Steve was desperate to give this new idea a try. The clock's ticking. People die. People with MS commit suicide at an alarming rate. There's no hope. So why don't we give them hope? His neurologist told him to wait for more studies. Was it easy to see or hard to see? Instead, Steve went to see vascular surgeon Sandy McDonald, who runs an imaging clinic in Barrie, north of Toronto. He decided to test Steve's blood flow with an ultrasound scan that Dr. McDonald paid for out of his own pocket. In dealing with Steve, I have to say very specifically that I don't treat MS. I have no idea what the effect of the balloon angioplasty will have on MS. But I knew that from the studies that we had done that he had abnormal flow characteristics that warranted further assessment. This is so he then sent Steve for a venogram, a test where dye is injected to see the veins and blood flow. And it's actually quite narrowed. And just as the theory suggested, Steve had abnormal blood drainage from his brain, courtesy a narrowed left jugular vein. When you inject the dye, it just stays and stays and stays, and, and is very sluggish to drain out. It's a condition called CCSVI, chronic cerebral spinal venous insufficiency. And following Dr. Zamboni's study, Dr. McDonald and his colleagues decided to unblock Steve's vein. This is home video after the procedure. Well, I felt warmness or a difference in my left side of my face, and I thought I'd just try and wiggle my toes. So I did, and it moved. Oh, this is so powerful. Then I thought about my left hand. And there is the left hand. On the One of the uh, nurses came over, said, are you all right? And I said, I'm fine. Shake my hand. And she shook my left hand, which was useless before. It was quite remarkable. The question as a physician, though, is, is it a placebo effect or is it real? 
I mean, when a patient really wants to get better, sometimes when you do something, they seem to feel better, and it really comes down to over time assessing whether or not his improvements are real and will be a lasting, and who knows. Steve was just one of six Canadian patients found to have impaired blood flow and treated by Dr. McDonald and his colleagues. Five agreed to be interviewed along with their families, like Leanne Webb, diagnosed with MS almost 20 years ago. At one point, I didn't have any movement in my, my right side. She also fit the theory with tests showing a narrow jugular vein, which was opened a month ago. I feel a lot better than what I have, what I have in the last long time, five years, six years. I can do laundry. I can go out for a walk. The fatigue is... I don't even feel fatigued anymore. <laughs> Matt Maltese has suffered with MS for a decade. And the whole right side goes numb. Now the whole left side is numb. An initial ultrasound scan of his neck early February showed a problem. He seems to meet as having abnormal flow in the jugular vein. Doctors opened up two blocked veins later that month. So can you show us how you go up and down the stairs right now? His father, Vito, took this video the day after. Usually going up, he doesn't make it up the stairs, but it's a 10 or 15 minute event. He went up and down those stairs that morning about 10 times. And the strangest thing is he's, he started whistling, and he hasn't whistled in years because he hasn't had any feeling on his left side in three to five years total, no feeling at all for three to five years. Now is so much better. Can actually go out and do stuff now. This is the uh, angioplasty balloons there. Christopher Guest is a colleague of Dr. McDonald's and performed some of the procedures. It's a technique doctors have used for years to treat other problems in the arteries and veins. Do you think you did anything that's out of the box by trying this? If this was a risky procedure and there was uh, poor data to support its use, then this would be um, a little more questionable. Um, but this is a group of patients that are extremely debilitated, severely debilitated, mm -hmm. and uh, um, the, the procedure is exceedingly safe. All around the world, patients are buying into this idea, finding physicians who will test and treat them. This is what I'm going to be bringing to my vascular surgeon. And then posting their results online. I've got a 50% narrowing in the right vein. They inserted a balloon. Here is the balloon. But doctors who treat multiple sclerosis say this rush goes totally against the rules of science, where theories have to be proven before patients are treated. Dr. Mark Friedman is the director of the MS Research Unit at the Ottawa Hospital. The link has not been made. The association has been made, but no one has convincingly shown that this association has anything to do with the disease. And until it's proven, stand by. Well, why would you, why would you fix something that may have nothing to do with the disease? Many neurologists are very skeptical of this theory. Dr. Friedman is one of the most vocal, at one point quoted as calling it a hoax. Why, when it came out, did you call it a hoax in the National I Post? think I was misquoted on that. That's not what I said. What did you say? I mean, uh, the quote for the article said... Oh, I said, know what they said in there, but I, and I, I saw that and I but had it said, thought you know, about rewriting... We might spend millions of dollars chasing something that... That might turn out to be a hoax, is what I said. That's the level of, of uh, support that the research that has been published to date uh, gives it. There's not a lot behind this. He and other neurologists insist there should be no testing unless it's part of a study and no treatment until this theory's been proven. Your message... Whoa. Whoa. That's it. I mean, the main message is it's an idea. All ideas on the table right now are important because we don't have the answers. So until we have the answers, we need to have a wide scope of uh, understanding, a wide scope of belief. Dr. Friedman and some colleagues wrote an article highlighting the dangers of treatment, in particular a modified liberation procedure that uses metal stents to prop open the veins, which are prone to renarrowing. One patient required surgery after the stent fell into his heart. Another died from bleeding, linked to medications prescribed following treatment. 
the Canadian patients were treated only with balloons in keeping with the Italian study. I don't think it's a, it's a dangerous procedure. And if you look at the complications that have been reported, the complications are uh, uh, related to stents more than the actual angioplasty. And uh, we certainly would never place a stent until there is data to support doing that. Most doctors agree this whole subject needs extensive research. But these patients don't want to wait. Why? Uh, with the damage that could have been done for the next, how long, ever long that the study could take, two years, three years, the damage may not be reversible. So why would you wait? Let us know what our risks are, let us know what our choice is, and let us make the choice. And the choice that Mike Gandhi and his family made was to have the treatment, even though the improvements appear small. My speech got somewhat better. My balance somewhat better. His father, Tito, hopes it may stop his symptoms from getting worse. I'm not a medical professional, but I'm saying that, hmm, I've got something that's blocked in my neck, and if they unblock it, I get all kinds of sensations. If it has nothing to do with MS, I'd want to do that anyways. Sandra Black remains disabled by her MS despite her recent treatment, but she reports two improvements. Her once cold blue feet are now warm, and she feels more energetic. I'm happy being able to stay awake all day and getting up earlier and the warm feet when I go to bed. But some people but would say those are such small changes. I know, but everything is bigger when you have MS, you know, and the biggest word I think is hope. Steve has had some of the most noticeable improvements. This is the first time he's been on a walk in years. You're not cured. No, I don't think so. There's some things I may never hit back, but I'm about 75% uh, better than I was before. That'd be a fair statement. Okay. But okay. these cases are called anecdotal reports. They don't satisfy science, which needs large, organized studies to confirm if this is real or not. That's why Dr. McDonald and his colleagues are shifting away from treating patients individually to planning a formal research program. There's a phenomenal push from patients to try and get something done to improve their quality of life. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, I have not. Online and from around the world. The cat's out of the bag. They can't unlearn about CCSVI now. I've managed to get an appointment in St. Vincent's Hospital with a vascular surgeon. Patients with MS are pushing their medical systems to look at this provocative new diagnosis. Both of my jugular veins are narrowed. It's called CCSVI, vein abnormalities that seem to be found in those with MS. A new theory that was actually first proposed over a century ago. Here in the town of Dornbirn, Austria, Retired Dr. Franz Schelling is watching the eruption of interest. Convinced this long-dismissed idea will finally get its day in scientific court. I started hoping again. As a young doctor, he had treated patients with MS and was not convinced it was just a disease of the immune system. So he visited libraries across Europe, finding a curious thread. Over and over, scientists had reported signs of brain damage, that appeared linked to abnormal blood flow. The more I collected, the more I was convinced it, it had to be a venous flow inversion. But even after studying models of human veins from autopsies, he couldn't figure out why blood might be flowing backwards into the brains of those with MS. That needed more research. How many agencies did you approach in how many countries to say, hey, I found something here, let's take a look at it? Oh, I can't remember anymore. I just remember I went to Vienna, to Zurich, to Brussels, uh, to Philadelphia, to New York, to London. And uh, Your message was? Check the veins in MS. That was 30 years ago, and MS specialists sent him letters of rejection writing that MS was an immune disorder, nothing to do with the veins. Bottom line, you were not allowed to do this research. They well, said it no. was It was impossible. It really cracked me down <laughs> to, because I had patients 
that had uh, patients died of MS when I went back to surgery after I realized that there was no interest in clearing up this issue. That is until 2002 when Dr. Schelling's son decided to collect his father's scientific work and publish it on the internet, giving his theory a new worldwide audience, including one vascular surgeon in Ferrara, Italy. Dr. Paolo Zamboni had also been analyzing the link between MS and blood flow. In pops an email from Dr. Schelling. Yes, and I asked him, but why you are writing me? And uh, he wrote, simply because I found by Google, so I wrote to you immediately. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. The internet connected Dr. Zamboni's own new findings of narrowed veins in many patients with MS with Dr. Schelling's years of background research. In fact, the online world is becoming a game changer for MS, connecting not only scientists, but also desperately unhappy patients who are now demanding doctors investigate this theory quickly. All of us MSers have been very pivotal in uh, getting the word out and making people look into this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I've been saying that for ages. I will be going to see a vascular surgeon. And the drive to learn more has drawn scientists to the San Giorgio Hospital in Ferrara, Italy. Breath in and out. Where Dr. Zamboni and his team are teaching researchers how to test for vein abnormalities using ultrasound as these scientists prepare to launch studies of their own. Go back to the jugular. The right internal jugular vein is blocked. The interest is really exploding, and we are moving uh, really faster uh, because uh, I have continuously contact with colleagues from all over the world. In this first international training program are neurologists, radiologists, and surgeons, including Canadian vascular doctor Sandy McDonald. I'd love to be involved in the study because I, I think it is going to be challenging, but I think it'll give the answer to the question over a very short period of time. A very important and one of the important draws, the intriguing idea that balloon angioplasty might lessen the symptoms of a disease that's now treated only with expensive medications, according to BC radiologist Lindsay McCann. If you think of the societal cost of MS, people's young people, um, think of what we can accomplish with a relatively simple procedure. And so we don't want to let this languish and go on for a long period of time. We really want to get to the bottom of this. Good afternoon, MS Society Board. Scientists are now searching for research dollars from donations or through scientific grants and from MS societies. But Ottawa neurologist Mark Friedman, who spent much of his career testing other promising treatments, worries that agencies like the MS Society are diverting funds away from other hopeful leads. It's being forced, I think, to head down that road because uh, patients are feeling, and the patients are the main drivers of the, of the funds, obviously, supporting the society's work on this. Uh, basically, they're looking at this as saying, stop everything else. Redirect your funding to this project because it's worthy of it. Um, and I don't know that that's necessarily the truth over many other kinds of projects that are out there that, that may indeed have more scientific rationale to move forward. Still, Dr. Friedman says his team has submitted a bid to study the theory. <clears throat> but studies could take years. Christopher Alkenbrack has already found out he has problems with his neck veins, and he's in a hurry to get them opened. All they want to do is prove or disprove this new theory. Well, I can't wait. I could have a, a major attack during those two years while I'm waiting for something to come to Canada. So the native of Wolfville, Nova Scotia, is funding his study of one, spending over $10,000 from his retirement fund to get the experimental treatment at a private clinic in Poland. Absolutely, because my next attack could leave me in a wheelchair for life. The reason why I'm, I'm so insistent on this procedure is because I have secondary progressive MS and nothing, none of the, the medicines that I've used over the years, the injectable medicines, have really worked uh, to stop my MS. It's still progressed nevertheless. Many MS patients are now traveling to new clinics 
opening up in Eastern Europe and India that are charging thousands of dollars for testing and treatment. I understand that they are desperate and uh, they can be attracted by this. I do not recommend this because I do not know the quality and uh, probably this can be dangerous for the patients. He insists the best way of moving forward and protecting patients is by convincing established medical communities with hard scientific data and with more studies that test and treat patients. My position is to stand and to respond with science and to tell to patient to give patient because uh, we are really running very, very fast. And from his post in Austria, retired Dr. Franz Schelling is trying to help patients navigate all of the uncertainty via the Internet, the very tool that has helped push this old theory into the 21st century. I think the development uh, can't be stopped anymore. I hope it will find the proper path he insists this new avenue may prove far more complex than just opening up blocked plumbing, but he's celebrating the worldwide investigations. What Zamboni has found and what is, other people are looking is at is very, just the beginning. Yes, of course, but a very, very great beginning, a grand development. Neurologists from around the world will be meeting in Toronto this week in attendance, Dr. Zamboni, answering questions about the liberation treatment. And on the agenda, the results of a major study into CCSVI conducted in Buffalo. If you want to learn more about our story, go to w5.ctv.ca. There you'll find additional information and extra interviews you can watch online.